Today we are talking about the new Gaussian splatting feature which have been published very recently in the Polycam service. I have spent some time now to testing it out and I want to share my thoughts and experiences. Is it what we have been waiting for? Hello boys and girls, it's Olli here again and welcome back to my channel. It has only been a little over a month since the research paper on Gaussian splatting was published at the Seacraft 2023 event. This new way of producing 3D graphics immediately arose huge interest and all the enthusiasts and eager developers quickly headed to download the source code of this method from the GitHub. And since then the development has been amazingly fast and it has really only been a matter of time who succeeds in making this an easy to use service that brings the Gaussian splatting within everyone's reach. Now it seems that the Polycam service has succeeded in introducing this technology as the first easy to use web service where you can upload your own image sequences and create your own Gaussian splatting models. So the service currently works online on Polycam's website and it can only be used via a computer's web browser. Polycam's iOS application does not yet support Gaussian splatting technology. Of course, you must be registered with Polycam's service to be able to use this feature. You should also notice that there is a disclaimer, which says that this is an experimental research tool. By uploading data, you consent to using it for research purposes to improve 3D reconstruction and that all reconstructions generated with this tool will be visible publicly. Uploading process is easy in itself. The image sets must be in PNG or JPEG format. But here comes the first limitations. You can currently only upload a maximum of 200 images of your object. At a minimum only 20 images are needed, but everyone knows that a little more than that is needed to produce a high quality model. But I understand this decision now that I have looked at the speed with which users have already uploaded numerous models to Polycam's servers within a day. It is clear that the limitation regarding images has been right thing to do in order to keep the processing times reasonable. Polycam promises that processing currently takes around 30 to 40 minutes per model. Well, what do the finished Gaussian models look like in the web browser then? First of all, it is great to watch that during the loading process we see how the individual splats are drawn on the screen and how nice the 3D view is generated from the calculated point cloud model. Rotating the model is incredibly light and the presentation runs amazingly well considering that this all is happening in a web browser. The fine aspects of the Gaussian splatting technique such as reflections and transparency are very well visible and can be experienced in models with water or other reflective dimensions. But there are of course downsides as well and no program is perfect the first time it is released, which is very understandable. For example, the point cloud can be generated in an awkward position, and the orientation where the model is loaded may sometimes become visible at a very strange angle. For this reason, navigation and rotating the model may be difficult, and on those cases it may not be possible to view these models from the desired angles. Naturally, I tried uploading content to Polycam that I have recently made and used in my own YouTube videos. For example, I made experiments with these images of environments that were shot in a low light. They turn out to be quite reasonable looking models, although I would have liked to change the white background color to black somehow 
as it has been possible to change in Polycam with other standard surface models. Tools for changing the background color have been available at least in the Smart Device app for some time now. But it is clear that these tools and other features will be added to the service later. Polycam has hinted that, for example, tools that can remove floating artifacts and clean the model are under development. I also had to notice that the processing is not always successful. When I tried to load source material from my pre-rendered 3D images and investigate how this soda can turns into a Corson model in Polycan service, I noticed that it was not successful at all. I think that product model like this against a flat background color is too challenging to calculate with the accuracy that Polycan currently can offer. Instead, this room model used as an architectural visualization managed to be generated well enough. But speaking of accuracy, so far I have managed to create better results when I have trained Gaussian splatting models on my own PC. Polycam has clearly had to compromise on the quality to get this running on their web platform. Limitation on the maximum number of images to be uploaded and the iteration settings for the accuracy with which the model is trained are set quite low values. And when you look at these models which have been uploaded to the service so far enough times, you will notice that even though this technology is interesting, are these Gaussian models still any better than what we achieved with a NERF technology a moment ago? In my honest opinion, this web viewer has been developed at a tremendous speed and unfortunately it shows in the quality of how well optimized Gaussian splatting models it can display. But of course this is only a development phase and it is clear that this service will only grow and go better as we move forward. It is remarkable that Polycam's team has managed to be the first to produce a process where everyone can now explore and create their own 3D caution splatting models. But what about where can we go from here as a next step? There is an option to export this model out in point cloud format but it is at least still a little unclear to me where this can be used. Since we already have plugins for Unity and Unreal Game Engine, this PLY format should be possible to be imported directly into these game engines. I haven't been able to verify this yet. Perhaps those of you who have tried it already can share your experiences and tell about it in the comments. In addition to this, Polycom of course has an embed code feature that allows you to attach this window of the viewer to, for example, your own home pages. But that was pretty much all the features that Polycam can currently offer. You can't export pictures or any videos of your course and models other than via screen capture. But still, as mentioned, this is a very great achievement in this time, and Polycam has now set the bar for where this development can go next. There is a lot of hope and expectation that someone will next release a working add-on for Blender. But while waiting for that, I would personally see that the next challenge is, is even more important for the developer who is able to bring this to easily available for virtual reality devices. And I think we are already very close, because now it has been clearly demonstrated that these 3D caution splatting models can be made to work in a web browser. The most logical next step would be to develop a VR mode like we have already seen in the popular Sketchfab service and their viewers. Their 3D viewer already includes a very easy to use mode for virtual headsets. 
So, we are still living in very exciting times and this competition and development is very interesting to follow. What do you think? Have you already tested the service produced by Polycam? Leave a comment below and if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Let's continue the research. Goodbye.